Finnovate showcases cutting-edge banking and financial technology through a global conference series featuring short-form demos and thought leadership. Now, the conversation continues on the Finnovate podcast. Hi, welcome to the Finnovate podcast. We're continuing our conversations with the Finnovate Spring Best of Show winners from this year's event, 2023. And joining me today, we have Maya Mihailov, CEO of Savvy AI. Maya, thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you so much for having me, Greg. Finnovate was an amazing show. Excellent. Well, clearly you resonated with the audience, and I would encourage anybody listening to check out the seven-minute demo that you can see up at Finnovate.com. You can see exactly what Maya presented in, well, let's call it about 7.05, really. I was going to say 7.05, the hook was about to come out. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was me, actually. I would have been the hook. So, um, <laughs> but anyway, let's for people who haven't seen the video yet, let's start by just talking about uh, what, what Savvy is all about. Sure. Savvy AI is about bringing agile AI to the entire enterprise, which means we want to empower product teams to build, launch, and manage their own AI apps, helping them lift their organization and bring AI transformation. We're all about helping teams, even without data scientists, even without pre-existing data, helping them elevate and upskill with Savvy AI. Yeah, no, it's a really cool platform. And I think one of the challenges, you know, we joked around a little bit about the struggle of getting it in under seven minutes. Obviously, there's a lot that you can potentially show, right? This is a really powerful tool. Can you start by um, you know, giving an overview of what exactly kind of sets Savvy apart from some of the others who are working in this AI space? Well, I think the AI space has been traditionally thought of as complex, costly, and time-consuming. And the way that AI is thought of is this traditional process where you have to have petabytes of data in this huge data lake, and you have to clean and transform it, and you have to find these magic unicorns called data scientists, and they're going to build you these bespoke models, and then all of a sudden you need a ton of custom development and a ton of custom infrastructure build. What we learned by building AI solutions for Synchrony Financial and for Fortune 500 brands is that there has to be a way to empower every product team, every business team to launch their own AI apps for their own use cases. And the best way to do that is to flip the problem on its head, to start thinking about this as not a data problem, but as a business problem. What are you trying to optimize? What are you trying to improve? How are you trying to improve your product or workflows to make it better and smarter with machine learning? And how can machine learning help you do that and help your team succeed? So I think the real power of Savvy is not individual business cases that we solve. Sure, we can help you with product upsell and cross-sell and you know, FP&A modeling and accepting or rejecting or reviewing transactions. But the real power of Savvy is what your own team can do with it right here, right now. The real power is exactly what we did on stage. We built an AI app to increase loan offer uptake in five and a half-ish minutes on stage. <laughs> And we showed teams how they can instantly launch this app and see ROI in days, see that efficiency that machine learning can bring them right away without that timely cost consuming process by basically helping upskill their own existing teams with no new resources required. That's the power of it, is that your own team can deploy. Yeah, no, I think, and that's such a powerful message because there are obviously people out there who want to engage in the AI space. They know they need to update things, but they struggle with this. You know, how do I take that first step? So that's a really crucial piece that you're able to do is just kind of help them say, hey, look, this is how you can take that first step. Now you kind of glossed over a little bit, but I want to come back and, and dig in a little bit more about all of the different places where you could potentially point Savvy because there are no shortage of areas within most financial institutions infrastructure that you could potentially deploy deploy an AI solution. What, what are some examples that you want to share? Absolutely. So there are many examples where Savvy can be used to increase the intelligence of a product or workflow. You can use machine learning and Savvy to accept, reject, or review transactions if you're a payment company. You can use it to upsell or cross-sell products intelligently and in a personalized capacity with machine learning. You can use it to increase loan offer uptake. You can use it to incentivize auto pay. You can use it to target debt collection, and you can use it even for FP&A modeling, which is a regular task that FP&A departments at all financial institutions are doing that's quite time consuming. Think of us as almost like a Swiss army knife of AI, where 
we help teams accomplish their goals. What they should think about machine learning is where in their organizations do they have workflows or processes where they have to make a decision between, let's say, three options or more than three options, A, B, or C. I have to constantly make this decision in my workflow to help my organization. That's an excellent opportunity for what I like to call is machine usefulness, where you can apply machine learning plus your own team's knowledge to help quickly and efficiently bring productivity or operational efficiency to that flow. Yeah, and I love the phrase machine usefulness. I think that's really putting it uh, very succinctly. So um, obviously, yeah. again, you resonated with the audience up on stage. I'm curious to hear the folks who came by your booth after your demo, um, what types of problems were they bringing to you? Where, where do you imagine some of them might be eventually pointing your solutions? Well, you know, the, some of the solutions that we discussed were definitely brought up. Sometimes they came to us with an exact problem, like we're trying to increase auto pay. And we've been incentivizing everyone to use auto pay, but we think some people need more incentive. Some people don't need any incentive. How can we be more efficient? Or we're using a decision tree in this scenario of figuring out which product to present to which customer. And it's not working. I mean, our growth numbers are getting stagnant. How can machine learning help me make better decisions faster? But what was really interesting is after our Finnovate demo, after showing teams that it was this easy that you know, if I can demo it live on stage in five minutes, they can get it going even in their own companies. It, it was just that sense of, I really thought this wasn't for me. I thought AI was hard. I thought I needed to know linear algebra. I thought it was only for data scientists. And you just opened my eyes to the fact that my team can build and launch our own AI apps. And I think it's just that that spark of understanding and that spark of I can do this. It's a really empowering feeling. And we were really excited when folks came to us uh, after the demo and said, wow, I, I remember one gentleman said, wow, that was the first time somebody explained machine learning to me in a way I completely understood. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess the question I have, do most people not understand linear algebra? I mean, come on, I thought that was basically... <laughs> I mean, I use it daily, but apparently yeah. not everyone does. <laughs> um, so, no, th I think that's really interesting, too. And, and again, it comes back to this idea that you can do this, right? That you can actually yeah. start on this. And, and obviously, getting started is the most difficult part, I think, of any innovation journey, of any, you know, digital um, journey. So this is a really crucial step. I want to come back and talk about another side of this. You mentioned kind of at the introduction um, around the data that uh, is obviously a crucial component of an artificial intelligence solution. You, you have to have good data, um, but you were talking earlier about you don't actually have a need for a data scientist when it comes to Savvy's platform. Can you talk a little bit about how you're able to build on top of the, the data that an organization has without necessarily needing that specialist? Absolutely. So I think what makes Savvy really special is we were heads down in stealth mode for almost two years, building a tool that we wanted to use as a product team, building a tool, testing it against teams and saying, is this accessible? Do you understand what's going on here? Does this make sense for the way that you work? And I think it's that maniacal focus almost on ease of use that allowed us to say, look, I get that data science is important. And for certain huge problems, like fraud, for example, you're going to need an army of data scientists to address it. But when you talk about your everyday business problems, when you talk about improvements that you want to make in your KPIs today, you don't really need a data scientist for the data that you have that you're processing through with Excel or a dashboard. You know, you don't need those individual specialists. You can use this tool. This tool is accessible and easy to use for you. And more important, and I think this is kind of the heretical uh, conversation here, is you might not even need pre-existing data. I mean, the way that everybody has been taught to do data science has been the same way for the last 20 years, which, like I mentioned, you start with this huge data lake, and then you have people cleanse your data. You have people transform your data. I mean, this sounds like wizardry when you actually think about it. And then these magicians who know linear algebra and all sorts of other Python and R, they come in and they do magical things with your data and build these models. Well, what if you didn't need that? What if you could outline a business problem? What if you can use a tool to transform that business problem into a machine learning app that can learn and can continuously learn and evolve itself? And what if you didn't need historical data? Part of the power of our product is that it can actually do something called a cold start. 
And a cold start means that we can start AI without historical data. You can tell us what data we need to collect. We give you a simple tag. It sits in your workflow. It sits in your product quietly, and it collects the data it needs for machine learning. And when enough data is collected, enough cleaned and automatically transformed data is collected, we tell you where we're ready to start modeling and we're ready to start deciding. And that process can take as little as two to four weeks. And it's it's really transformative when you start telling people, you know that scenario you had in your business where you were really breaking your head, but you didn't have good data to deal with it, or maybe your historical data was biased or it just wasn't there. We can help you move forward with a smarter solution. Yeah, no, I think that's that's excellent. I also, I love the concept of data lake. I like the, the idea that there's like a bunch of wizards who are somehow doing something magical to this pool of data. Um, I mean, and, so and many think... people are not even fishing in their data lake, if you get my drift, <laughs> so... <laughs> I feel like we're going to approach the uh, useful end of that metaphor really quickly, but it is, I think, something, and not to disparage data scientists, because what they do is is absolutely valuable, and for a lot of organizations, understanding your data is crucial, but it shouldn't be an impediment to getting started, and I think that this this can be things that you can pursue separately. I should understand my data. That's a very valuable goal. There's a lot of things that can come from that, but I shouldn't view that as something that blocks me from doing something else that I want to be able to do. And I love that you're able to help people kind of get past that. And the idea of a cold start, something without even having any data is is really fascinating. Now yeah, we're going to turn the conversation. Like, oh, go don't ahead. Don't get me wrong. We love data scientists, Greg. They're great folks. <laughs> But their big math brains need to be used on really, really big problems in the organization, especially considering, you know, how hard it is to build those infrastructures for them to use. So what we're talking about is these everyday problems that businesses have all over that if they just had a smarter solution for that they could launch quickly and maintain, they could lift up the entire organization by solving these everyday problems. Yeah. Yeah. And that's huge. Um, I'm going to turn the conversation now towards something that is everybody's favorite topic, which is, of course, compliance. Everybody loves to talk about the compliance side of this. I love talking compliance. Don't, don't so, you do that like every Monday? I'm like, let's start the week with compliance. <laughs> I, I actually do <laughs> more often than I probably would care to admit. Um, but let's talk about it in the context first of Savvy specifically, and then in the context of kind of the broader AI ecosystem. So from uh, let, let's start small. How do you make sure that you stay compliant? compliant and how do you address any compliance concerns that could come up? Because I imagine you get that objection fairly frequently. Absolutely. And listen, the majority of our team came from a Fortune 50 regulated bank. We had compliance risk and legal basically sitting with us for every single decision, following us to lunch if needed. (laughs) Um, And so we're very familiar with compliance. So we built the foundation of Savvy from the ground up thinking about regulated industries, thinking about what compliance needs they had. And what we realized is, first of all, they need transparency. In order to be able to trust AI, you need to understand how it's working. So we built Savvy so that we're completely transparent in how the models are working, how the data is flowing through them, what the error rates are, so they can look at it and say, okay, I understand what's going on here. And they can even click a button and get a nice little paragraph in English plain speak that they can hand over to their compliance team and say, this is what we're doing, not in code, but in English. Now, we took it one step further and we said, what else do regulated industries need? Well, they need guardrails. They need to make sure that the AI is playing within a sandbox that they are comfortable in and playing by business rules they're comfortable in. So if they have hard and fast business rules and say, No matter what the AI decides, apply our company's business rules first. We can support that. And finally, we took it one step further and we said, not only do you need to know how the AI works, but you need to know sometimes why individual decisions were made by the AI. Because if you're called by a regulatory agency, if someone complains and says, hey, I think I was unfairly discriminated against because I'm a woman, for example, and you didn't lend to me because of that scenario. You can actually use Savvy to deep dive into an individual decision that the AI made and look at how that decision was made and look at the factors that went into that decision so that you can turn around to compliance and risk and say, look, we're being above board, we're being fair, and we're being transparent. And that's essential, especially moving forward, as AI is increasingly coming under scrutiny from regulators, as it should. 
Well, let's talk about that last piece, because I think this is one of the challenges regulators always have is how do they stay current on as technology grows, they need to make sure that they're able to understand what's happening. And obviously, in order to regulate it, you need to know. So what's your view on the AI space in general and how regulators are approaching it? Is this something where regulators understand what's happening? Are they maybe a little bit behind or what's your overall sense on on a macro level? I think regulators are catching up quickly. You know, we even met members of the CFPB team at Finnovate, which was really surprising to us. Oh, cool. Yeah, no, it was great. We actually had them come by our booth and we explained how Savvy works and we explained to them how it works in a way that's transparent, how it can work to advance the agenda of fairness. Look, this is, I'm by no means saying that the CFPB endorsed Savvy, but what I am saying is, they're not trying to stand in the way of innovation. They just want to make sure that innovation plays by fair business rules that are consumer focused and consumer friendly. And I think that once you understand that the regulators are there because they're concerned about fairness and not to stop innovation, it's really easy to start showing them features and functionality that you, that we built in because fairness and transparency were important to us from the get-go. And and have them look at that and go, wow, I really get this. I really get what you're doing. And I appreciate the features that you have in there that kind of advances these causes. So I I think that as as regulators look at the banking industry more and as they look at AI more, you'll see that increasingly it'll be difficult to get away with AI that you cannot explain, that's not transparent, that's simply black box. And you're like, well, because the AI said so. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a good enough answer? Listen, you're putting... As a regulated business, you're putting your own reputation at risk and perhaps legal risk if you don't understand how your AI is working. So it's essential that you use tools and techniques that are transparent and auditable. Yeah, no, and I love that that kind of conversation happens at Finnovate. It was a long time before we had anybody from the CFPB coming to our shows at all. And now we've noticed a real willingness on their part to come and engage and to just have these conversations. And I think the more that the two sides of the coin talk to each other, the better everybody is served. So it's really cool Absolutely. that they came to your booth, that you're able to explain it in a way that they were able to understand. And so I think there is that pressure on everybody. You know, you have to be able to explain it. But um, the CFPB is uh, always welcome at Finnovate. We love working with them and we love when they go and engage with our demoing companies. So this is really fun. Listen, it's great as a young, innovative company to be able to show your product to regulators, especially when you start building it with yeah. transparency and auditability at the foundations, because then it's exciting to show what we're doing. Absolutely. So um, we have a little bit of time left. I want to end on uh, maybe a more fun one. Um, what process still exists in banking that you can't believe hasn't been at least touched by AI? What, what's the biggest miss of the industry as a whole so far? You know, I know this is starting to be touched by AI, but we got to get more AI in there faster. We're still using really antiquated ways of assessing creditworthiness of individuals. And there are these legacy scoring systems that are just not keeping up with the world of today, not keeping up with cash flow analysis, not keeping up with how people's lives are changing in status or even macroeconomic trends like stimulus checks. It, you know, these legacy scoring systems, they punish immigrants. I'm an immigrant myself. And when we came to this country, we had no file or thin file. And it doesn't matter what job my parents had or how much income they had or how little debt they had because they didn't have an established credit history by antiquated terms. They couldn't get certain credit products. This is a great example of where AI and machine learning needs to be applied more because we need to stop judging people and we need to start judging transactions. Now, that yeah. was impossible to do, you know, in the way back when days when we had to look at an individual's creditworthiness. But we have the tools, we have the data, and machine learning can crunch through that data fast enough so we can start looking at individual transactions and say this transaction is good or bad, it's trustworthy, it's not trustworthy, rather than start making decisions about people and saying this person is good or bad or trustworthy or untrustworthy. It's a great example of where we need to use more AI across the market faster. Yeah, yeah. Now, certainly, I think there's an onus on everybody to do better in that space. Yeah. And frequent listeners of the podcast will know this is a theme that keeps popping up 
we've had venture capitalists who've talked about this. We've had other innovators talk about this. We've had members of credit unions and community banks and financial institutions of all sizes who recognize this problem. And so I think this is definitely an area where as an industry, we can do better. And so I think it's a, a great place to end. Um, again, uh, we have to wrap our conversation here, but I've been talking with Maya Mikhailov, Mikhailov sorry, CEO of Savvy AI. Um, again, check out their video at finnovate.com slash videos. They were best of show winner at Finnovate Spring. Maya, thank you again for joining me. It was a pleasure. Thank you again so much, Greg. It was a wonderful show. We're excited to participate with Finnovate again. And thanks for having me. The Finnovate podcast is produced by Informa Connect in association with Provoke.fm Media. Check out Finnovate.com for information on Finnovate's upcoming shows and to learn how you can get involved. The discount code Finnovate Podcast will save you 20% on tickets to all of our events. And you can email us at info at for information on sponsoring, speaking, or demoing. Thanks for listening.